to think that we're going to be out of this before well into 2022 would strikes me as at least you know on the optimistic side, if not wildly optimistic. It's the, a very deep recession, uh, and it's uh, it's going to take us a long time. Many countries will struggle, especially the developing countries. Not all is lost, but uh, it's not a perfect world. It's, we are in a perfect strong. We have to have global cooperation. The first thing that strikes me as a as a as a businessman and really looking at it from the ground up is that we better be prepared for a long one, and we really must remain very flexible, resilient, and adaptable as we go through this. If you take the 30 largest global economies, only 14 of them are, are in recovery mode. That is, they're on a path where the virus is more or less under control and opening up and doing this sort of, you know, day by day, difficult management process of making slow and steady progress in both uh, reducing the magnitude of the contraction and controlling the virus. There really isn't a V-shaped recovery. The only cases that would approximate that are the ones that got on it early, and you can count them on the fingers of one hand, or in the China case, because the, um, because the virus control program was so large and comprehensive and aggressive, and so heavily supported with digital tools that there was a remarkably quick uh, transition from essentially lockdown to, uh, to a, a recovery path. Everybody else's path looks slower, and more difficult for the obvious reasons that uh, that the lockdowns have been less stringent, came later. Significant economies are actually improving, uh, albeit slowly, in the context of uh, reasonable containment of the virus. These economic hits are very, very large uh, and will leave residual damage sort of all over the economy. We're in for a slow um, and probably slower than the kind of majority view out there, whatever that is, um, recovery with a very difficult tail at the end because there are certain sectors that are, that are really hard to open, anything involving very large groups of pe people. We are in for, uh, I think, at least two to four years, depending on how sharp uh, you, you come down and how quickly you're able to do smart containment and so on. The short-term policies that a country takes, the leadership, the ability to communicate, the ability to do a good uh, tracing, containment, uh, and so on, has a big bearing on, on, the, on the relief stage and the recovery stage, and how much harm is done to households, to firms, uh, to the financial sector. I think multilateral cooperation or global cooperation is a necessity because this is the nature of the problem we are facing is global. Uh, and you want to be able to uh, start opening up, not just in your country, but opening up between each other as well. We are uh, maybe suffering from the lack of very strong uh, multilateral uh, organizations that can lead the way and then everybody follows. It has to be what I call a coalition of willing. But in the medium term, how do we, uh, how do we address the increased protectionism and uh, breakdown of value chain and what is the global value chain going to look like? That's a much bigger longer term issue. And I think this is, this is a big issue because uh, we know that, for, especially for East Asia, uh, trade and openness has been uh, the way development has happened. Uh, in our part of the world, and it, that's also the, should be the way uh, other regions uh, experience it. And at the same time, the coalition of the willing to make sure that the multilateral uh, WTO uh, rules of the trade uh, continues to to uh, prevail, uh, to prevent, I think, to prevent the bilateral uh, tensions that we know between the two largest countries. Uh, the only way is actually to address it multilaterally. We really have a very strong need now to really reconceptualize and think through a new form of multilateralism that will be able to carry us through in the post-COVID world. You know, with the impact of technology and all the other issues on sustainability and income inequality rolled in, and especially addressing a world in which we have to uh, really deal with this issue of pandemics. I think how we actually look at this from a business standpoint, 
large businesses, small businesses from around the world, is really how we can actually develop a, a form of, uh, of cooperation, maybe global supply chains or, or other forms that will be governed by new rules on trade and so on, and pragmatic way of coming up with a way of addressing some of the issues that we need to deal with. Countries are actually competing. It's not firms anymore that are competing. It's countries competing and say, okay, I want to make sure I have, I can produce my own medicine. I can produce my own uh, medical supplies, my, my own food. Diversification is the answer. Uh, and uh, that international coordination and cooperation is even more key here uh, to make sure that you don't have uh, these kind of policies that distort unnecessarily uh, these decisions. To be real, uh, politically, uh, a lot of countries will still be going looking inward and uh, uh, undertaking protectionist policies, but it needs to be shown that it actually hurts your, your, your country and your people more because you end up paying higher prices. I think as a businessman uh, and a global trader, what I can say is this trend of reshoring is going to happen. In fact, it, you know, it has always been the case, things to do with security, defense has always been domestic, right? It's always been nationalistic and country oriented. What the pandemic has done is expanded the scope of that, you know, into what could be classified as essential products, you know, that must be done uh, nationally, PPE, for example. And then another set that could actually be uh, non-essential that in my mind, that may even need to be even more globalized because you're trying to create efficiencies on a global basis and create resilient supply chains that will ensure long-term efficient supplies of those non-essential products. This pandemic has accelerated, amplified trends all over the place, including yes. especially the digital ones. My view is some sectors will, will rapidly increase the pace of digital adoption, new business models that are kind of hybrids, some of which were underway and omni-channel characteristics will come into to, to play and others will be, mm -hmm. you know, seem like they're new because it was going more slowly. We're going to actually emerge in a world that is going to be much more technologically driven and more digitalized than we've ever seen before. And this may in fact be the opportunity for us to actually think about using that as the basis to actually right some of the inequalities for the less developed countries to play catch up ball on the, on the use of technology. And this is really what the AGI is all about. Our opportunity to convene uh, speakers like Marie and Mike to really address these global issues with you at this crucial time. We've raised so many questions. This will be room for future Global Thinkers series. Thank you very much to all of you.